But let's take a look here, guys. This is what we'd love to see. Destiny 2 Salvation's Edge Verity Encounter was so complex, not everyone working on it knew exactly how it worked, says Bungie. This is from Zuhad here. This is what you want. This. You want maybe one to two people that's designing it to know what the hell is going on, you know? Everybody's just like, Ooh, what's happening? What am I doing? Just put the triangle in the guy's hand, okay? Put the square in this other guy's hand and don't worry about it. So Bungie has opened up on the intricate design of Destiny 2's new raid Salvation's Edge, revealing that the Verity encounter was so complex that even some of the developers didn't fully grasp its workings. Destiny 2's latest expansion of the final ship has introduced a brand new raid Salvation's Edge that has quickly earned a reputation as one of the most challenging raids in the game's history. Yes, it is. Released just two weeks ago, fans are calling it possibly the hardest raid Bungie has even cr ever created. The raid even broke Last Wish's record, the longest day one raid in Destiny's history taking 19 hours to complete now i need to say this too guys it wasn't just 19 hours you know obviously like it's more time it's 19 hours when we as guardians are better than we've ever been before i mean just think about what we have in our kits from prismatic from all our different loadouts from loadouts literally readily available i mean we all had i mean i had like seven different loadouts ready i was like if i get it if i get approached with this encounter this encounter, i had a sword loadout too just for just in case which we utilize in the second encounter we are at our strongest and the other thing is the difference between the last wish raid and salvation's edge is we have high frame rates and i know that seems like a small thing but back in the day we had 30 fps okay look if you were on console at 70 something field of view 30 frames per second which most of us were i was too i was not on pc at the time holy hell you are at a disadvantage was there a single team on playstation 4 that beat salvation's edge like the old xbox and and, and the old ps4 did, did, was there a single team that even beat the raid in the first two days i i would believe not but see that's what we had to deal with during the last wish raid. it was it was difficult so the point is yes last wish was an incredible raid experience especially the day one experience and it had, it had held the record for so long but salvation's edge cleared it but it cleared it on on a multitude of levels there was only one team that beat it on ps5 everyone else was on pc no shit, guys dude that's crazy man that's crazy all right this claim is further bolstered by recent comments from benjamin womack the combat area lead at bungie who shared some behind the scenes insights into the raid's development in an interview with the IGN's Fireteam chat. Talking about the new Dread enemy faction and touching on some of the other hot topics in the community, including ongoing discussions about Titans and the Titan Prismatic subclass. When jokingly asked to explain the Verity encounter in the Salvation's Edge raid, Womack said that the encounter was so complicated that not everyone on the development team fully understood its workings. Quote, that Verity encounter was something that I think was complicated enough that not everyone working on it knew exactly how it worked, Womack admitted. Chat what kind of student were you? That's a great, that's that's probably the best way to know who you were in this situation. I was always the guy, the teacher or the you know professor would give an assignment and I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know what the hell they were saying. You know, I would be like, and then they'd be like, you got it? And then be like, yeah, knowing damn well, I didn't get any of that. And then hopefully I could just latch on to somebody and be like, hey, can you water that down real good for me real quick? Let me know what's going on there. But I can, I can guarantee that was, you know, going on Verity. I would probably just be like, listen, what's, what's my job? Even doing the encounter. I do 3D world from time to time, but I, I actually don't like doing 3D that much. I like doing 2D. 2D simple. 3D though is, uh, it's, 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 it can, you know, it can be somewhat complicated if, if you're just first looking at it. And if you don't understand like what the equations of different shapes are and what to, what to dissect and whatnot. And on a, in a day one experience, it was extremely extremely complicated there's a reason why everybody was stuck on that encounter dude we caught up we were like four hours behind everybody four or five hours and then we get into the fourth encounter at this point i was like dude i bet they done someone's gonna beat the raid right now and we get there and that was when you guys confirmed to us no one had beaten the encounter everyone had been stuck here for hours that's my favorite dude i love an encounter that says hey every bit of knowledge that you've acquired throughout the first portion of this raid that matters not we are now about to fuck you for the next 10 to 12 hours that that right there that's peak St salt was stuck on the fourth encounter for 13 hours i love that no offense salt now womack elaborated on the process noting that while confidence in the encounter's creators was high the complexity was such that it demanded a deep understanding and coordination. Everyone was very confident that the people who made the encounter knew how it worked. It was appropriate. It fulfilled its purpose, I would say, he said. Apart from that, Bungie has recently announced some major changes to raids and dungeons, confirming that it will be removing surges from both of these activities following community feedback, 
What's your favorite encounter in Salvation Stitch raid? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Yeah, I would say probably fourth encounter. I loved how different it was. I, I think that, you know, it was it was just that that random thing to mix everything up. I like that it didn't build. It didn't build on any of the previous encounters. I, I, I like also that it logically didn't make sense. In retrospect, it makes sense. But initially looking at it, it made no sense. And dude, I really believe that's, you know, because we were up, we was like five, six in the morning and suddenly, you know, I had watched a clip. Everyone was spying on each other. You know, this guy was spying on this guy and this guy was spying on this. And everybody was like blocking their footage. And there was a small clip of a guy that I watched and I saw him with this big ass, this damn Cenotaph helmet. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I could see him. I could see his, his statue in there in front of him. And then I saw the shape that he picked up. And anyways, I put two and two together from that small clip and we were able to figure out how to get out of 2D and break the mirror. Long story short, I feel that my one strength and that was really the only part of the raid that I, I feel like that I contributed really well uh, was in, was figuring out how to break the mirror. If, if you went into it trying to make sense of it, I think that's where you fucked yourself. But if you just decided to just go in there and just grab shit randomly over and over, eventually trial and error would aid you. But man, it's even 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 talking about it like this, you still got the 3D side. So I mean, like, luckily Mac had figured out the 3D side. It was the fact that no amount of preseason preparation made you ready for the fourth encounter. No, that's the thing. It's not like you like you could run out there and go fucking play Scrabble and or tic tac toe. I don't know. I mean, like it's not like you can go run a multitude of other raid encounters and this would make you prepared. For th I'm telling you, you almost had to go in here and oh my god, if it's like if you try to make logical sense of it at least initially, it would hold you up. I really feel like this encounter screwed the people the most that are good at puzzles. I, I feel like the people that actually succeeded in getting through this encounter were just like the just the, the punch it trial and error over and over. I think I think pure dumb luck could have been it too. No, I think pure dumb luck probably played a role. Pure dumb luck on the 2D side. On the 3D side, you had to make logical sense of it. And you know, looking at looking at things, you know, in retrospect, it's always easy to be like, oh, well, this is where we went wrong, you know. But you know, initially, I, I mean, I was just like, okay, what do I do? I pick up, I match my shapes. Uh, uh, what are these shapes on my wall? Do I need all three? I mean, dude, it's a complicated encounter. It served its purpose. It was meant to hold everyone up and to challenge you, and it has done so. And it's still, it's still a difficult encounter. I love it. I hope Bungie, I, and you know, here's the thing. It's probably going to be another four or five years until we get a raid like this raid. I wouldn't be surprised if the next raid we get from Bungie is going to be, it's going to be like something like Scourge of the Past, you know, everybody's going to get in there, slap it around. And I think it's going to be a long time till Bungie gives us something this, this difficult. Oh yeah, go do it in LFG. Guys, I actually do, I do fire team finder a lot. And um, can I just say this? I'm not trying to like shit on you guys, but I would say my success rate is substantially higher with folks that I find randomly in fire team finder than the folks we pull here from stream. Now listen, I'm not trying to offend anybody or or dig at you guys. You know what I mean? So I haven't played with all of you. I'm just saying like on a on a random pool base, you know what I'm saying? Like randomly joining in fire teams on fire team finder versus, hey guys, can I just pull somebody here from this? You know what I'm coming from? I can't tell you how many times I pull people from here. We we did Crota's in. Crota's in had already been out for three, four months, maybe five months at this point. It had been out for five months. By the way, that's a Destiny one rate. Okay, so technically it's been out for over a decade. Point is, I pulled five people here from stream. Longest rate of my life. It wasn't the longest rate of my life, but we were in there for three hours. Three hours. I had to go. We had to go through there and teach. And listen, I'm fine with teaching when I'm in the and when I am in the mental state to teach. I'm at that moment I was not. I was looking for like fast clear. I was like, hey guys. I need I need to get in there. I need to get so I need to get the, the catalyst done for Necro. And let's get a let's get an easy clear right now. And boy was that a bitch, you know? And those situations I find fire team finders actually a bit better. So I'm just trying to give you a, a, a point of reference here, guys. I feel like everybody's on fire team finder. And the way I look at it is listen, you jump in there with a random fire team. There's gonna be one, maybe two at best that you actually that you actually like. That's the person that you add. That's the person you send you send them a DM and you say, hey listen, this group's kind of falling apart right now. But if this thing goes south, that you and me, we we find some other people and and try this again tomorrow. You know, what, what are we doing right there? We're creating relationships, okay? You don't have to like the person. Again, I say it all the time. I don't like less, all right? I tolerate less so that I can get loot. And that's what you got to realize here, guys. You tolerate certain people to get loot. That's destiny. 
Although I do joke about jumping into the into random fire teams and pretending to know more. I would always suggest, and look, this goes a long way. If you just go watch the encounter somewhere, whether it's Reddit or YouTube or Twitter or whatever, just watch the encounter. Like not even a guide. Like you can go watch, you can go listen. If you listen to a guide, even better. But if you just go watch the encounter, like I feel like just watching a raw encounter helps me tremendously. Like just doing that before jumping to the raid the first time, that makes a huge difference. Now, let me ask you something. I want to get a poll on this real quick. Would you like to see future raids with encounters like Verity? Obviously not multiple encounters like Verity, but would you like to see future raids with more encounters like Verity? Because you were sweating so much on that raid. I aged during that raid. I, I literally trim off years of my life potentially from that raid. But you know what? It's worth it. At the age of 99, when I'm finally about to drift off into the next realm, I will sit there. And one of the victories I will tell my great, great, great grandkids is that I and five other gents cleared Salvation's Edge in contest mode. Really? Nobody? Nobody caught that? Great, great, great grandkids? Really, guys? My kids would... I mean, the first thing you should be asking is how quickly are my, are my offspring actively having children? I mean, that should be your first question. That's, that's some back, that's back to back. I mean, like back, back to back. I mean, that's, that's fast. All right. What was the, what was the poll percentage of the people that said they wanted this encounter? 83. All right. There you go. 83% of you love Verity. 83% of you want an encounter like Verity in every raid going forward. 83% of you think that Verity is an easy encounter. Bungie, take this metric in this poll right here and actually give us the next raid. No bosses, all Verity. Back to back, four to five encounters straight. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.